There are four ways that President Trump could stop being the president. The first two, death and resignation, aren't very likely. The second two are becoming something of a national obsession. Impeachment was the framer's method for removing a president, and here's how it works. A member introduces an impeachment resolution, or the whole house votes on a resolution to begin an inquiry. If the party in control is on board, the action begins with the Judiciary Committee, which holds hearings. Then it goes to the full house, where impeachment requires a simple majority vote. If the House votes yes, it then appoints members to act as prosecutors in the trial that will be held in the Senate. If two-thirds of the Senate votes to convict, the president goes. As anyone old enough to remember the Bill Clinton saga knows, the road is long and arduous and gross, and going down it can be politically toxic if the voters don't support it. It also actually requires evidence of treason or bribery or high crimes and misdemeanors, which is a fancy way of saying evil deeds, as opposed to just being a bad president. And even if you can prove that, Impeachment relies on a huge amount of Republican members from Republican districts and states to vote against a Republican president. That has anti-Trumpers beginning to congregate around the other option that the Constitution provides, the 25th Amendment. In this model, it's the president's own team that kicks him out. Under Section 4 of the 25th Amendment, if the vice president and a majority of the heads of the executive departments think the president is unfit to discharge his duties, they send a declaration in writing to Congress, and the vice president actually assumes the office of acting president. If the president disputes this, also in writing, he gets his job back, in which case the VP and the cabinet have four days to submit another declaration to Congress that nope, this guy cannot be president. The VP becomes acting president again, and Congress has 21 days to decide the issue. Ousting the president for good requires a two-thirds vote in both the House and the Senate. In other words, this option is even harder to pull off than the first. It requires the president's own appointees to turn against him and probably lose their jobs in the process. And then it requires even more votes in Congress than impeachment does. The 25th Amendment process has never been tried, and only two presidents have ever been impeached and neither was convicted, though Nixon might have been if he hadn't resigned. Neither removal route is technically impossible, but both would require buy-ins from Republicans up and down government and from a clear majority of the public. So it's going to take more than phantom memos and ill-advised firings to get there. <laughs>